Good morning. Welcome to everyone. Uh, we're thrilled that you can join us for this webinar on LawSeq, Facing the Legal Barriers to Genomic Research and Precision Medicine. I'm Susan Wolf. I'm chair of the University of Minnesota's Consortium on Law and Values in Health, Environment, and Life Sciences, hosting this event uh, in collaboration with Vanderbilt University Medical Center, Ropes and Gray, and Hyman, Phelps, and McNamara. This is, webinar has been a long time in coming. As a lot of you know, we were originally scheduled for April, and then uh, because of the pandemic, we had to switch and delay. Uh, so it's been a lot of work bringing us all together. I guess the silver lining is that so many of you from all over the country, and in fact, from all, of, all over the world are able to join us for this event. Uh, so we're thrilled by this. Um, and I wanna welcome everyone. Uh, the webinar grows out of an NIH funded project funded by the National Human Genome Research Institute and the National Cancer Institute, a project on LawSeq building a sound legal foundation for translating genomics into clinical application led by myself, by Ellen Wright Clayton at Vanderbilt and Francis Lorenz at the University of Minnesota uh, with collaboration from a all-star working group, many of whom are participating in today's events. Uh, let me just give you very briefly a little bit of context on the project. Slides, please. Great. Uh, next slide. So this is really a novel project funded by NIH to initially map and then try to shape the law of genomics in the United States to support successful clinical integration of genomics. As I said, the PIs, there are three of us, and our methods have been a combination of empirical research, legal analysis, and a structured consensus project with our working group with four focal problems on our minds. First of all, liability of healthcare providers in the face of this very fast moving technology. Second, the law governing the quality of genomic analysis and variant interpretation. Third, the law governing access of individuals to their own data as well as privacy protections. And finally, a domain we've called framework, which is in this highly translational domain, how do we uh, interdigitate the law of research, the law of clinical care, the law of public health genomics, and in fact, the law of direct to consumer genomics. Next slide, please. The catalysts, I think, are probably obvious to everyone on this webinar, which is the transition underway to genomics and precision medicine, the explosion of genomic research and capability, and its increasing integration across multiple domains of clinical care. But in the face of all of that, the reality that law has struggled, as you know, it's lagged, it's created barriers and confusion. This is really, this webinar, a dedicated opportunity to get a grip on that and to get your thinking on where do we go from here. Next slide, please. If you go to the project portal on the consortium website, you'll see a lot of materials, information about the project, our online database for searching the law of genomics in the US and links to many, many publications, including three symposia uh, collecting a lot of our work uh, in the Journal of Law, Medicine and Ethics, in Ethnicity and Disease, thanks to a collaboration with uh, Marino Bruce at Vanderbilt and Vance Bonham at NHGRI 
and then a second symposium at NJLME. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a quick list of the legal half of our national working group, and a lot of these people will be speaking today. Next slide, please. This is the other half of our great working group, uh, experts in the clinical, uh, laboratory, informatics, and industry dimensions of genomics. And again, many of these are with us today. Next slide, please. Uh, key publications we've published a lot include uh, an article uh, on stakeholder perceptions, really growing out of our empirical work, a consensus article led by Gary Marchant on the liability issues, another consensus article with Barbara Evans in the lead on uh, the legal and policy issues raised by quality control in analysis and, and interpretation, uh, Ellen Wright Clayton leading an article on privacy, and uh, my leading an article on that framework issue. Next slide, please. This is a, uh, an important slide because of all the work, we, I don't think we even fully appreciated how much work this was going to be, to build this online free searchable database of federal and state US law on genomics. This is really a complement to a database probably a lot of you have used for years, a great database that NHGRI hosts on uh, state statutes and state bills, their legislative database. This is not just state, it's also federal. You can actually hover your cursor across the map of the US and pull up state uh, search capability, but you can look for federal too. And it's not just statutes, it's also case law, reported case law, as well as regulations. So. We are keeping this up to date and we hope you'll use it. Um, there's also down in the lower right, you'll see selected secondary sources. So there's a lot packed in here. Next slide, please. And I just want to acknowledge, uh, this is a huge collaborative effort. Actually, part of this slide is missing. Uh, so they're even more than what you see on this slide. And I particularly want to acknowledge Audrey Boyle and the consortium who has really anchored this entire effort. Uh, we would not be where we are without her, her uh, enormous work. So that's, uh, if you turn off the slides, please, let me do the rest of our housekeeping so we can get to the action. Great. Uh, so the goal of this conference is to really collaborate, to analyze where we are in the law of genomics, what the big problems are and where we should go from here. Uh, we're gonna start with two plenary presentations, one by Gail Jarvik from the University of Washington, the second from Mark Barnes at Ropes and Gray at 11.25 a.m. Central. We know you're in a lot of different time zones. Uh, we'll take a five minute break and then we'll come back with three successive panels. Uh, after the first two panels, we'll take another five minute break at 1.30 Central, and then we'll do that last panel. Um, and in each panel, we've asked the panelists to really be concise, five to seven minute presentations, because we wanna get to your questions and your comments. Uh, we're videotaping the full event. That's what we always do. Uh, and we'll post within two weeks for free public access. Please share, use, use it for teaching, uh, share with colleagues. Um, the way we're going to do QA is after, <clears throat> after each uh, panel or plenary, we'll first turn briefly to see whether there are any hot button comments from within our panelist moderator group, and I'm gonna ask them to use that raised hand function, but then we'll rapidly turn to your questions. So uh, please use the question and answer Zoom function, and you can upvote questions so that we can readily see what's a question that a lot of people want us to get to. Um, 
I want to thank the planning committee, uh, which has included Mark Barnes, Gail Javitt, Ellen Wright Clayton, David Peliquin, and myself. And again, a huge thanks to our staff. We've got a great technical staff uh, allowing us to do this by Zoom, led by Matt Tweeter today, as well as all the staff members, including Audrey, who I've mentioned, who have brought us to this point. And with that, uh, I'd like to invite just a brief welcome from our partners. First, Mark Barnes at Ropes and Gray, and then Gail Javitt at Hyman Phelps. Mark? Yes, good morning, everyone. It's nice to be here. Thank you for joining us. We had originally wanted to hold this conference in Boston um, in order to, at, at the Ropes and Gray um, uh, conference facility in order to be able to, to, to reach beyond the academic audience and really go to one of the hotbeds of, um, of biotechnology uh, with all of the, the, the various uh, startup firms and established firms in, in Boston and beyond. I'm sorry we can't do this in person, but it is good, as Susan said, that we are able to reach a number of people who otherwise might not be able to attend. The focus today, I think, as Susan said, is on all of the issues that she set forth but we want particular relevance today to the, uh, to, the, to the commercial sector, to the industry sector, and to how all of these uh, legal doctrines and these ethical issues uh, and these practical issues affect the planning uh, of, um, of, of industry efforts to, to refine personalized medicine and to understand genomics and, and, uh, and genetic diagnosis. So with that, let me turn it over to, to my colleague, Gail, and she can, she can welcome you as well. Thank you, Mark. Hi, I'm Gail Javitt, um, director with Hyman Phelps and McNamara, and we are delighted to be a sponsor of this event today. I just want to thank Susan and Ellen and Francis for uh, creating this opportunity uh, low these many years ago, and it's so exciting to see it come to this fruition. Um, I'm also sorry not to be in person with everybody, but so excited by the number of people uh, that are joining uh, and very excited to hear about the, uh, from all the panelists today, these issues are of great importance to many, if not all of our clients at Hyman Phelps, uh, regardless of sector, pharma, device, university. Uh, and I think we have a real opportunity here with all the, the great minds to, to move these issues forward uh, to helpful resolution. So thank you. Great. Uh, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Gail, for all you've done. And both Ma Mark and Gail have been members of the working group for this project. So it's been low these many years of collaborating on this. 